Welcome back to my kitchen, everyone. Today, we're making vegan Zuppa Toscana. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. All right, everyone. Today, we're making vegan Zuppa Toscana that you will not be able to tell from the original. I've got my Instant Pot heating up on saute mode here. You can also do this in a pot on the stove. Not a problem if you don't have an Instant Pot. But if you don't have an Instant Pot and you want one, check the description box down below. I will leave a link to the model that I have down there. So this is all heated up. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the one yellow onion that I've diced up. Get that in there. And then I've also got a tablespoon and a half of minced garlic. And of course, this is the pre-minced stuff that I buy in the jar. And then I'm just gonna saute that until everything's nice and softened. So while that is sauteing, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my kale and my potatoes. I'm gonna start with the potatoes. And I've got a small knife here because I already washed these and I know that there's a couple of them that need a little bit cut out like this guy right here. So this is um, seven potatoes and they're not very big potatoes, they're kind of small. So if you've got larger potatoes, you can use less potatoes. Or if you really like potatoes, you can just use a whole bunch. <laughs> That's a great thing about cooking at home is you can really customize every single recipe. There it is. See that guy, that guy needs to be cut out. Okay, and that is pretty much it. I actually got um, all these potatoes at my gleaning program this morning. Uh, I'm gonna put the diced potatoes back in here actually. Give this a stir. And you're gonna cut these into small uh, bite size pieces. So not very big at all. We're actually, this is a really quick soup, whether you do it stovetop or in the Instant Pot. Uh, stovetop takes about 15 minutes um, to boil and soften everything, and then you just kind of throw the rest in and, and get it all together. And then in the Instant Pot, you're just gonna do high pressure for uh, three minutes. So it is a very fast recipe. My cutting board is very full here. I'm trying to put them in there as I dice them. Give this another stir. And I've got my uh, Instant Pot set on the highest saute mode, so it is really cooking. <laughs> My eight month old is laying on the floor over there having her lunchtime bottle. <laughs> Whoops. So she's not trying to talk over me today. Yay. <laughs> Food is pretty much the only thing that uh, keeps her attention for very long these days. Oh, dropping potatoes. My dog's gonna be happy. She probably shouldn't be eating too many raw potatoes, but that's okay, I don't drop much. <laughs> mm, this is starting to smell so good. Garlic and onions, always. I think I mentioned it in a previous video that Anytime I'm cooking, if it's just the onions that I've made so far, my husband comes in and goes, oh, it smells so good. And I'm like, well, it's just the onions. <laughs> that's, that's all I've gotten to so far. Everything else is not in there yet. 
And funny story, <laughs> when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, I think, or preteen, somewhere around in there, um, I did not like vegetables. My stepmom would cook food and she would put onions in it like, like you do. And I would pick out every single onion and I would complain about all of the onions. And now in my cooking, I can't get enough onions. So she's very happy about that and loves to say, I told you so. <laughs> all right, so last potato here. And my onions are looking really good. What I'm gonna do is um, while I am chopping up the kale, I'm gonna go ahead and put in an entire box of veggie broth to let it heat up in my saute mode. The onions and garlic are all nice and softened. And I want my Instant Pot to cook really fast. I'm kind of a hurry today. I have to go pick up my daughter in a little bit from preschool. So that's why we're doing this recipe because it's very fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that all in and I'm gonna leave it on my saute mode to let it heat up the vegetable broth so that it comes to pressure faster once I set it to that. Okay, I've got my kale here. And if you'll notice, I've got it in a uh, cup of water. This helps keep it nice and crisp. It was actually, um, I hadn't put it in water. I was kind of bad. I bought this like, I don't know, a week ago or so. And I did not put it in water. So it was getting a little wilted. So I just put it in some water today and it crisped right up. So let's see, set those over there. And I've got a bowl here. I'm gonna put them in once I'm done chopping them up. I'm just gonna tear the stems off and put them in my garbage bowl there. And I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. I'm not really gonna pay too, too much attention. And this is, uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of kale. Um, this is curly kale. So there's also, um, they call it dinosaur kale and it's um, like a flat leaf kale, but I like using the curly kale for this. You could honestly use any kind. Oh, I think she's done with her bottle. <laughs> All right, my assistant is happy again. She finished her bottle and now she's got some teething wafers. She's got one tooth already and that is it. We have no more in sight. Oops. I know they sell those, um, those little tools to pull off the stems off of like uh, kale and stuff like that. And I think it doesn't, it's not really necessary for kale. It's, the kale stems are pretty easy, but I don't know, maybe they're good for um, pulling off like the stems of herbs, pulling the, the leafy part off of herbs. So um, I don't know, I've kind of been thinking about getting one, but then again, maybe not. If any of you have one of those tools, um, tell me in the comment section below how you like it um, and how often you actually use it. Um, I'm not a fan of cluttering up my kitchen with stuff that is like one use or I, um, you know, it only has like one purpose or I only literally use it once. <laughs> All right, so the kale is chopped up. And this is getting pretty hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm actually gonna put the kale leaves in down, down in there first. Let those get started in the hot broth. And then we have got a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, uh, two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Now smoked paprika is different than regular paprika. So make sure you use the smoked paprika in this recipe. Uh, I've got a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning and one uh, teaspoon of garlic powder, even though we already put garlic in there. All right, so I'm gonna mix all those down into the broth and then go ahead and put my potatoes in there. All right. So I'm gonna set this for manual high pressure for three minutes and then once it's done, we will come back and finish the recipe. So stay tuned. 
All right, so my Instant Pot has run through its three minute cycle and then I just immediately did a quick release. There's no need to wait uh, and do a natural pressure release on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And I just wanna make sure that the potatoes are softened. I'm sure that they are, but you always should make sure just in case. So yep, those are all nice and soft. So I'm just gonna give that a quick little stir and it smells so good already. Okay, so I have the last of my ingredients here that I'm gonna stir in. I've got uh, a can of coconut milk. Well, this is actually just, uh, it's about the same amount as the can of coconut milk. It was left over from it, opened up a carton of coconut milk and um, th there was like, I had half of it left. So, whoops, go ahead and dump that in. And I've left this on warm uh, because I want to just warm through the coconut milk and the white beans that I'm gonna put in. So next I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast. Now, if you don't have nutritional yeast at home, um, you can totally skip this part of the recipe. This is really because we're vegan um, and we need to supplement with B12 because we don't eat meat. So um, vitamin B12 is really the only vitamin that you need to supplement when you're vegan. Um, and the way you do that is you eat fortified uh, breads and cereals, you eat nutritional yeast, um, or you can just take a vitamin. Um, so I like to put nutritional yeast in stuff just to kind of make sure b12 is not a deficiency that you want for sure okay and then i have a can of white beans that i've drained and rinsed and these are actually the uh, cannellini beans or white kidney beans so i'm going to go ahead and throw those in there and then i'm just going to stir everything up and let it heat through and then it is ready to eat so I am just gonna let those uh, beans warm up and then I'm gonna come back and serve up a bowl and show you what it looks like, so stay tuned. So the last ingredients that I put in there are warmed through, so I'm gonna go ahead and serve up a bowl here, show you what it looks like. I'm gonna get a nice a big bowl because this is one of my favorite soups. So you can see what it looks like. Isn't that gorgeous and it smells so good. Okay, I am just gonna top off my individual bowl with some salt and pepper. All right, I'm gonna stir that in and give it a taste. I'm so excited. This recipe I look forward to like every time, like I, <laughs> when I know that this recipe is one that I'll be making, I just get so excited, it's so delicious. And I might even give this one some, <laughs> we'll see. Mm, oh my gosh, you guys, it is so good. Even if you're not vegan, you really should try this recipe. It is amazing, you cannot tell it from the original. Mm, get some more broth in there. Mm, mm. So good. I think my kid wants some. <laughs> I think I'll give her some. We gotta go pick up my other uh, daughter from preschool, but when we get back, they will both have a bowl. So that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, click that little red subscribe button down below along with the notification icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you next time.